So in this demo, I want to show you how to configure uh, agentless exception monitoring. This would be so you can monitor uh, elements off of your client machines, specifically the exceptions, crashes. What do we do with that Windows error reporting data? We don't necessarily want users connecting directly to Microsoft to upload their error or crash information. We want them uploading them to one of the management servers in our environment. Then from there, we decide whether we want to upload it to Microsoft or not. Regardless, we now have a central record of it so that we can report on it. So how do we configure that? Let's take a look in the console. So this is going to happen under the administration workspace. And I want to take a look at my management servers. Now, if you had multiple management servers, you would pick the one that you want to have be responsible for collecting up this information. Uh, we can right click it and choose configure client monitoring which will launch this wizard. Everything is a wizard, right? So uh, let's take a look through here. So this is just the introduction page. We'll go ahead and click next. Now the first thing is to configure CEIP settings. That's the Customer Experience Improvement Program. Uh, that's the one that allows customers to sort of contribute to help out Microsoft as they further their development. Uh, they can gather up this information uh, or Microsoft gathers up this information and uses it in order to help them write better code for future versions. So you can basically uh, put up a setting here that says, no, please continue to send data directly to Microsoft, or yes, use the selected management server to collect and forward the CEIP data. And we can choose whether it's going to be SSL um, and whether we're using Windows authentication or not and on what port number. Okay, so how are we doing that? Well, we're going to collect that information up and send that on over to Microsoft. Um, so let's go ahead and hit Next. Now we're going to specify error collection settings. So first of all, we need to specify a file path to collect error reports. Uh, the file share path can be a local drive on the selected management server, which would be a C drive, or a UNC path to an existing network share. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and make it local to this management server. So let's go ahead and create a new folder called, we'll call it AEM, uh, Agentless Exception Management. Okay, so I'm going to say C colon backslash AEM. Now, do we want to collect error reports from Windows Vista based or later clients? Because that's Windows error reporting. It started with Windows Vista. Uh, specify this management server port number. Um, that they'll use, and we'll just go ahead and take the defaults. We can specify whether it's going to be an SSL-based connection. Uh, if we're doing that, a certificate needs to be installed on the management server. So for now, I'm going to say no, and it's just going to utilize Windows authentication. Um, in fact, I should have said no on the previous setting as well, configure the CEIP settings. So we've specified where these files, remember a crash information is actually saved as a file and then uploaded into this local file uh, where we can collect them, right? So that now we have a collection of these crash data files that have been captured. Let's go ahead and hit next. Now, in terms of the error, do we want to forward any of those to, to Microsoft? So let's go back again to the previous slide. Here, we're just indicating that we want to collect the error information, right? When a user, under default circumstances, uh, if they are collecting the error information, they're just collecting it local. There it is. It's an error log, detailed log of memory addresses and exceptions, crash information of what we used to call Dr. Watson. That gets gathered or, or captured locally on a Windows computer when it happens, right? But then the user is presented with an opportunity to send that to Microsoft. What we're saying here is... The user doesn't even get a choice. We want to capture that information regardless. So we're going to capture it, bring it on over to our management server, and we're going to uh, dump it into this folder location without giving the user a choice. Now, once they're in that folder location, we're now specifying whether we, as an administrative organization, want to then forward all of those collected errors to Microsoft. Um, and then it's either basic or detailed. Basic being only the error signature, uh, detailed the error signature, and requested additional data. Um, now, none of this should have con and contain any private or privacy information. So we'll go ahead and make this particular selection here. Go ahead and hit next. Now, the wizard will now create the file share on the management server that will be used to collect error reports. Specify an account with the cr credentials necessary to perform this task. 
Again, we can do this with an existing user account, which is the action account. But if the action account doesn't have the ability to do that, we could specify an account right now that does. This is just to create a shared folder on the management server. And it's performing the task. The file share is being created. Please wait. Okay, so as it creates that file share um, and makes them accessible, it's taking the folder that I created earlier and sharing it out. The other option was I could have shared it myself and pointed to it as a UNC path. But uh, right now it needs to set up the share, and then once that completes, which it has now completed successfully, I'm going to click Next, you'll notice Create Group Policy Administrative Template. Okay, so choose a location where you want to save the admin template. This is that .adm file that uh, we're about to create that is based on all the settings we just selected. We're going to take that ADM file, import that into our Active Directory Domain Controller Group Policies, so that we can now push these settings to our various different client machines. Remember, they're agentless. So there's nothing I'm doing in this wizard that will you know, automatically connect to the various different uh, client computers, Windows Vista and Windows 7, and tell them what to do. We have to take this ADM file, put it into a policy, and push the policy to all the various different clients. So let's go ahead and browse. And uh, I'll just go ahead and dump it into uh, the local C drive for now so I have a place to find it. Uh, go ahead and click Finish. And let's go ahead and take a look on that C drive. And we can see right here, it took the fully qualified domain name of the system, scom1.fabricam.com, uh, and has the .adm extension on it. It's an administrative template file. So let's go ahead and copy that on over to our uh, domain controller. And I will go ahead and uh, choose copy. And I'm pasting that onto the C drive of my domain controller. And now that it's on the domain controller, let's go ahead and switch on over to the domain controller. So this computer you're now looking at is our domain controller. And if I go ahead and open up Active Directory Users and Computers, or I could skip that process and just say, under Administrative Tools, go to Group Policy Management. Either way, I'll end up linking to Group Policy Management ultimately. Now, if I want to push those settings to my various different computers, in my domain, here's a, a listing of my domain, Fabricam.com. I've got domain controllers. Uh, I've got a default domain policy here. Um, now, under group policy objects, what I want to do is create a new group policy object. And I'll go ahead and call it AEM uh, Settings. Agentless Exception Monitoring, if, if, uh, if that's what I want to call it. Now, I have a group policy object called AEM settings. I'm going to go ahead and right-click it and choose Edit. And that's going to bring up my group policy editor, allowing me now to edit policies that have to do with various different settings, like security settings, uh, preferences, control panel settings, thousands and thousands of settings that we can control through policies. Uh, under policies, we have something called administrative templates. And this is where you've got all kinds of different templates for control panel settings, network, printers, system settings. Uh, some settings are specific to a computer. Some are specific to users in the environment. Um, either way, we have a lot of different administrative templates. What I need to do is right-click the admin templates and say Add Remove Templates. I'm going to click Add. And I'm now going to go to the root of the C drive where I copied that ADM file. I'm going to click Open. There it is. You can see its size. You can see when it was modified and so on. I'm going to go ahead and click Close. And now you'll see in here um, this classic administrative template that has been added. Now, it's a classic admin template because I happen to be sitting at a Server 2008 system, and it now uses ADMX files in new XML format, uh, as opposed to the older format, which is that ADM file format. Uh, we're going to refer to those as classic. Now, Ops Manager is saving this as an ADM file because we want to support older versions of Active Directory as well as the Server 2008 version of Active Directory. But here we can see 
uh, Microsoft Applications System Center Operations Manager. And then we can see various different SCOM client monitoring settings uh, related to error reporting, CEIP settings, office applications, and so on. So for instance, if I scroll this over a little bit and click on the CEIP settings, this is used, uh, use this setting to configure CEI, CEIP data to be sent via SCOM. So you can see the name of it here, configure their customer experience improvement program. If I open that up, uh, we can see a policy in here that is not configured. But if I click enabled in order to turn this policy on, then the settings are already pre-populated with the URL and the port number necessary to connect to the correct location. That's the CEIP location. Um, so you can see it right in there, already pre-configured in our admin template. That's because the wizard created this template specifically for your environment. You cannot uh, export and import this ADM file into a different domain environment. It's, it's all going to be different. So for instance, configure error notification. If I open that up and click enabled, uh, we can see some options in here that are, were specifically configured through our wizard. Okay, if I say enabled, here's the error listener, which is SCOM1. That would be our uh, uh, AEM server that we configured for this. Okay, use SSL certificates is set to no because I said not to. Advanced error reporting, we can, so there are a number of different elements in here that get configured. Once I save this, I have my AEM settings defined within this particular policy. I would then have to link that uh, to a particular uh, organizational unit in my domain. Right, so under the domain, I would go to the particular organizational unit and I would li link an existing GPO. So perhaps it's my computers, uh, where, wherever my computer systems are. Uh, perhaps in this case, it's domain controllers if I want to control that. But for the most part, this is going to be for Windows, uh, Vista, and for Windows 7 type systems. So whichever OU those systems exist in, that's where I want to link this policy. Or I could link it to the entire domain so that all systems in the domain are pointing to that location. So that's how we configure and work with the uh, agentless exception monitoring.